In this lecture, we will talk about the fluorescence spectroscopy. So let's start from the heading. Fluorescence first. Fluorescence. What is fluorescence? When you target the electromagnetic radiations on the sample. And you know in the sample we have atoms. So these atoms will absorb the electromagnetic radiations. So what will happen to the atoms when they absorb? They will move from the ground state to the excited state. And we know in the excited state, our atoms are unstable. So they will move back towards the ground. And in the meanwhile, they will emit the electromagnetic radiations. So this phenomena, absorption and emission, when happens with the sample by means of electromagnetic radiation, this is known as fluorescence. So in short, once again, when electromagnetic radiations are targeted on the sample, and the atoms present in the sample absorb these electromagnetic radiations and they move the atoms move from the ground to the excited state and in the excited state our atoms are unstable so they will move back towards the ground state and in the meanwhile they will emit these excited atoms will then emit the electromagnetic radiations and this phenomena is known as fluorescence very simple now what is the spectroscopy spectroscopy is actually the interaction of the electromagnetic radiations with the matter and this interaction is of different types. These interactions may be in sense of absorption, emission, or transmission, due to which we have different types of spectroscopy. Suppose if it is absorbing, if our atom is absorbing these electromagnetic radiations, we will give it as atomic absorption spectroscopy, which we have already discussed. And if it is emitting, we will call it as atomic emission spectroscopy. And again, we have discussed. So in this spectroscopy, fluorescence spectroscopy, what will happen? Very simple. So I will just combine now these both steps in a single step. Fluorescence spectroscopy. So fluorescence spectroscopy is a kind of spectroscopy in which what will happen? The electromagnetic radiations when we target these electromagnetic radiations on the matter, this matter will absorb and emit the electromagnetic radiation. So such kind of spectroscopy in which matter is absorbing and emitting the electromagnetic radiation is known as fluorescence spectroscopy once again in a very single line when an atom absorbs emits the electromagnetic radiation so this kind of interaction between the electromagnetic radiation and the matter in which there is absorption and emission this is actually known as fluorescence spectroscopy and uh, the next uh, heading is principle now what is the principle of this spectroscopy the principle is very simple and very easy. Don't make it complex by adding the theory of the working in the principle. So principle is meant by the very rule that this spectroscopy follows. So that rule is actually the absorption and emission. So in the principle, you must try that the fluorescence spectroscopy includes absorption and emission. So now how this absorption and emission happens that is actually studied in the working. So before we move towards the working, we must have information about the instruments of the fluorescence spectroscopy. So what is the instrumentation of the fluorescence spectroscopy? The very first thing is that you must have the light source or the radiation source uh, in which we are using the xenon arc. We can use some other sources also, but uh, most often used is nowadays is xenon arc. And just in front, the light source or the radiation source, we have the monochromator. This is also known as filter. And this monochromator is given the name as excitation monochromator. We will study this function in our working. And uh, just after the monochromator, we have uh, a sample holding device known as cuvet or cuvet, in which our sample is present or which holds the sample. And just below that, we have another monochromator, monochromator number two. Here is number one, here is number two. And this monochromator or this filter is given the next name that it is now as emission monochromator. So just after that, we have our uh, photomultiplier tube, which is a detector. So this photomultiplier tube will detect. And then after that, we have the last instrument that is the readout device, which will give us the information about the spectroscopy. So now let's move towards the working. Xenon arc. This is the radiation source which will provide the radiations. These radiations will be targeted towards the sample. And here, this monochromator will filter these radiations. This is known as monochromator, filter, or excitation monochromator. Why is it called as excitation monochromator? The reason behind is that this monochromator will provide the radiation which is going to excite our sample. So, as the radiation passes from the monochromator, 
or from the filter then this radiation will come towards the sample some of the radiations will be absorbed by the sample and the rest will move so when this atom absorbs the radiation you got the concept that the atom will move from the ground to excited state and we know in the excited state our atoms are unstable so they will come back towards the ground and will emit the radiation so then these radiations will be targeted in different directions so in order to avoid the mixing of the radiations from the atoms and from the radiation source here the radiations from the radiation source are here and the radiations from the atoms will be in different directions so if we place our detector parallel to the qubit what will happen the mixing of the radiations will happen radiations from the light source and radiations from the atom excited atom these both will then move towards our detector so in order to avoid the mixing we are going to place our detector at 90 degree angle so like this what will happen just the radiations of the excited atom will come and will move towards the detector further in order to filter these electromagnetic radiations from the atom we will place another monochromator noun is emission monochromator so now why is it called as emission monochromator because it is only allowing the emitted radiations which are emitted from the atoms so these emitted radiations will then move through this filter through this monochromator through this emission monochromator these all terms are just the same so then what will happen then these radiations will reach the detector and our detector which is photomultiplier tube this photomultiplier tube will detect the signal and then it will multiply as the name indicates photomultiplier this is going to multiply the photons which are coming from the radiations now these photons will be multiplied after multiplication what will happen then these multiplied photons will be set into an electrical signal by the detector and then this signal will be given to the read out device which will give us the reading and we'll match that reading with our already noun readings so like this we can do two types of the analysis which are actually the applications of the spectroscopy fluorescent spectroscopy what are the applications qualitative and quantitative analysis means we can do both the types of analysis so what do we mean by the qualitative and uh, quantitative analysis very simple qualitative analysis is the analysis in which we take the sample we can analyze several types of elements present in that sample and what is called as the quantitative analysis in the quantitative analysis we can take an element and we can identify the concentration of the element so here in the qualitative we identify number of elements and in the quantitative we can take any one of the elements and we can identify its concentration so for the concentration type of analysis we are using the term quantitative and for the identification of the elements present in the sample we use the term qualitative analysis so we can do both by means of the fluorescent spectroscopy and still if you have any kind of question you can drop that in the comment box we'll come for the answers very soon thank you